All right, welcome back, everyone. It's your boy JB in the place to be. And tonight's topic of discussion is concerning a YouTuber by the name of Goddess Sunshine. She had the unfortunate uh, situation of losing the vast majority of her hair. And she wanted to share her experience with us, right? She's very popular. She has over 149,000 subscribers. Pretty much every one of the videos she does gets a thousand views. And for a woman of this caliber, this sort of entertainer, this sort of content creator, her hair plays a very important role in her personality as well as the content that she creates. Okay? All right, so let's get into it. So what makes her experience so important and worth talking about is because how it happened. Okay, she was groomed from a young age to make this a daily ritual of sorts. Okay, uh, we're going to hear it directly from her, how it happened, her routine with her hair, uh, how she felt about it, and how other people contributed to it. When I was born, of course, I had natural hair. I had my natural hair. I was not relaxed. At the age of three, literally at the age of three, uh, a family member, my grandma, she secretly behind my mom's back got my hair relaxed. My mom didn't know until like, she was like, oh my gosh, Cabrera's hair is like really straight. Like what's going on? Then she, you know, found out my hair was relaxed and literally for 22 years, I was relaxed. And a lot of people who personally know me, who maybe went to high school with me, or middle school, or elementary, but especially high school, I was I was committed to relaxed hair. And even when I was in college, um, I have a picture of my hair, like in college, I still got my hair relaxed. I'm gonna insert a picture. I had pretty decent- It looks nice. Relaxed hair. I might have had a few split ends, but by the time I was in college and I like trimmed off like the unevenness, my hair was pretty like full and not super, super terrible. Cause relaxed hair is such- What was the hair like before? tedious hairstyle. Um, I know that I suffered from scabs. Um, scabs? Which is why I'm really surprised that when I cut my hair, I didn't have a whole bunch of scabs and burns. Cause a lot of people, when they cut their hair, like that's, they see it. Um, so, I I was very content with my natural hair. Honestly, if I'm being honest, if my hair didn't fall out, like start just falling out like crazy, I probably still would have been relaxed. At three years old, her grandma got her hair relaxed. Her mom saw it and she was okay with it, signs off on it. And this has been this young lady's routine for 22 years since. Okay. This has become her routine, her habit, right? Her ritual of sorts. And apparently there's scabs and burns that can result from getting your hair relaxed. Now, when I saw this, when I heard this, I asked myself, so what the hell is this stuff made out of? One of the most hazardous ingredients in uh, hair relaxers is sodium hydroxide. Lie. What is this? This. It says here you should be cautious when using lye in large amounts because uh, they can cause chemical burns, permanent injury, or scarring and blindness. <sighs> so let's just kind of time jump. So around my birthday, um, but before my birthday, I got my hair cut into a bob. And Looks nice. Um, honestly, a lot of people don't know, but when I got my hair cut into a bob, um, I had went through something just the worst experience I ever dealt with in my life. And when I cut my hair into a bob, I had already had a little bit of a bald spot and I wish I had a picture. I did have a picture in my phone, but for some reason I cannot find it. Due to that situation, I had a really, um, I had a bald spot and, um, I just wanted to get the stress off of me and I was like, you know what? I should get my hair cut into a bob. Like people always say that you're connected to your hair, right? So I got my hair cut into a bob and you know, I had that for almost a year. But around my birthday, 
when I went to Denver, Colorado, which I like that place, um, I decided, okay, my mom, she kept telling me, oh my gosh, you got so many gray hairs. So I'll insert a picture of like, a, that's nothing. A view of the top of my head. I do have a lot of gray hairs and I still, I don't know if you guys can see, but I do have gray hairs and I'm 25. So her mom, uh, the one who's been perpetuating this sort of behavior, uh, is basically the person that pointed out that she has gray hairs and is now advising her to take care of it. Okay? I, I, I just don't know, man. It, it seems like rather than, you know, just accepting yourself, uh, accepting um, how you are, loving yourself, man, you shouldn't just have to uh, keep tweaking the screws on this whole thing called beauty. All right. Let's continue. I was like, you know what? I am going to get my hair dyed. And the beautician that I was going to at the time, she was like, you know what? Um, since you have a lot of gray hairs, you should get permanent dye because it will help and give longevity of covering the grays. She did warn so me she's that making a recommendation. since I relax and the permanent dye, it's, you know, gonna be a lot on your hair. But I said, you know what? I'm tired of my mom saying, oh, mom again. you got gray hairs, you got gray hairs. So I got it dyed. Does mom and have gray hairs? I just got hairs? it dyed just a regular black dye. Nothing crazy. She looks um, beautiful. And honestly, I feel like if I had just kind of just kept going with the black dye, I would have been fine. So uh, a few months pass by, I maybe have like a touch up or two of my roots mm. for the black dye. Mm -hmm. and my hair is fine. My hair isn't falling out like crazy or anything. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to be adventurous, but not really adventurous. So I wanted to have a darker, a darker black. And I was watching a few K-pop items. K -pop. And I was like, how? And also, I was watching Cheer at the time. And all of the women that had like dyed black hair, their hair was like it wasn't a natural black. It was like a very deep, intense. Black. It was blackety black. And I really wanted that. Mm. And she was telling me, okay, well, if you want that, you should probably do like a blue black. Blue black. And I was like, that sounds fun because I wanted to have like a black hair but with a bluish undertone. I was really excited. I was like, yes, yes, yes. It yes, sounds yes. exciting. So I got my hair re-dyed permanently blue black. Again. And the thing that infuriates me the most is that no matter if I was in the sun or if I was indoors, my hair, it never gave off blue black. It was just black. And she kept convincing me, oh, it is blue black. It is blue black. It is blue black. But Mm. Let me go ahead and pause that. So I used to be a mechanic, right? I used to work on cars. Here's a picture, right? A recent uh, Thanksgiving. While y'all was eating turkeys, I was uh, elbow deep in my brother's engine, right? So I, I used to work on cars, man. And one thing that I learned is you don't argue with customers, man. If this guy strolls in and says he wants like a new alternator, a new starter, because in his head he figured he needed it well hell man that's free money i didn't have to diagnose it there was there's no recommendations because this guy wants it this guy is going to get it right so we have the same situation she went from black her hair looked lovely but that wasn't good enough okay then she wanted to go <laughs> then she wanted to go blue black right uh she skipped past blackity black she went from black to blue black past blackity black and still it wasn't good enough okay imagine that an, an unsatisfied woman <laughs> all right so let's continue so when i got my hair dyed that blue black that blue is black. when things just started to uh, snowball. Um, maybe a month or two later, my hair, it just started to, well, I think I got the blue black and then I got it, uh, re-dyed a few times, like the roots. 
She got the blue black that is and then got it started to shed like re it again. I wasn't really aware it was shedding like crazy. Um, because my beautician, she would just show me a little bit of hair and be like, Oh, your your hair is shedding a lot. And at this time, mm -hmm. for like two years, I was going to this lady every single week to get my hair done. So you can imagine if you're going mm. to someone every I noticed that my hair it was starting to look a little bit thinner. Right, trying to skip thinner, more. And thinner. And I was like, I, I was really oblivious. Because it's falling until, out. Until um, she said this. She was like, your hair is shedding a lot. You need to go to the doctor. So there was nothing wrong. I don't have any thyroid issues. And I'm like, <laughs> it's not me. It's you. It's like, baby, you and dying. And the thing that was infuriating right? is that although I've, I had all of this extreme shedding, right? She had no problem the next week scheduling me for a relaxer. So the beautician made the recommendation that she should go to the doctor. Probably get herself checked out. Uh, and for good reason. Numerous articles have been linking hair straightening chemical products to an increased risk of uterine cancer, with indicators being sores on the scalp. Research in the Journal of the National Cancer Institute found a connection between certain hair straighteners such as chemical relaxers and pressing products and an increased risk of uterine cancer. So according to the research, there is an association between hair straightening products and uterine cancer cases, which was more pronounced for black women who made up 7.4% of the study participants, but almost 60% of those who reported using hair straighteners. Experts say several factors led women to use hair straightening products, including Eurocentric standards of beauty and a desire for versatility in changing hairstyles and self-expression. Studies done by researchers at the Duke University's Foucault School of Business found that black women with natural hair are less likely to get job interviews than white women or black women with straightened hair. Participants in the study say they perceived natural black hairstyles as less professional. So there is a monetary incentive to have your hair relaxed. Yet another study by the researchers at the National Institute of Health found that permanent hair dye and chemical hair straighteners was linked to a higher risk of breast cancer. And according to their research, the risk is more than six times higher for black women. They followed 46,000 women and found that overall, women who said they used permanent hair dye in the year before enrolling in the study were 9% more likely to develop breast cancer when compared with women who did not. And again, the risk was substantially higher amongst black women. Permanent hair dye was associated with 45% higher risk of breast cancer in black women and 7% in white women. One of the key findings in their study was frequency. Okay? Black women who dyed their hair every 5 to 8 weeks had a 60% higher risk of breast cancer. All in all, these studies focused on associations, not causations. So it would seem that the beautician had a legitimate concern for her customer's health. Her hair is coming out slowly over a long period of time. Okay, something has changed. And she's looking to maintain her customers, man. Nothing wrong with that. And but then customers I started like I, I thought about it for a few hours and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna cut my hair. And I told my mom and I told some family, and they were like, but one thing, now that I'm older, I'm 25 years old, I'm not afraid of what people think about my hair. And honestly, I'll be honest. No, I do not wear my hair like this in public. I wear a wig. I guess the hair grows back. And She's not afraid, but I have never experienced she my bought a wig. hair as like besides being a child. And I can't really remember that, but I'm excited about this journey. Um, I am a little nervous of what people may think on the internet because some people are very racist. Some people are very rude because um, me being a black woman and not having like, you know, Hawaiian deep down, wave, mama. loose curls, you know, people treat you differently. People definitely do. All my life I've been called nappy. All, I've had, you know, a boyfriend when I was a teenager, you know. 
All right, we're going to stop this always here. beat me down None about how bad my hair was. None of it. Okay, so we're going to slow it down, bring it to a full stop, because what we're not going to do on this channel is place blame where it doesn't belong. Okay, she already said she's been doing this since she was three. Okay, and she'd been doing it religiously. Okay, so if that's the case, how could anyone have seen this woman with nappy hair? Okay, no one could have. Maybe. I mean, grammar school's a bitch. <laughs> Some psychologists would trace this social anxiety, this anxiety with their parents as though it's not being good enough to overly critical parents. But it would appear that an older civilization, an older culture could be responsible for this, this origin of behavior. An article on ancient Egypt goes into some of the aspects of hygiene and customs of the ancient Egyptians, such as the facts that both men and women used to remove hair from their face and body, and apparently both sexes underwent hair treatments such as it being dyed, cut, braided. Human hair was the utmost importance in ancient Egypt to both the rich and the poor of both sexes. It was a means of self-expression. All right, so I want to thank you guys for joining tonight's discussion. I also want to thank Goddess Sunshine for sharing her experience with hair loss. It allowed us the opportunity to look at these sorts of situations that black women experience through a black woman's eyes. It also allowed us the opportunity to explore uh, the possible ramifications of excessive relaxer use, excessive hair chemical use. Okay. We also had a brief opportunity to look at the possible origins of these sorts of behaviors, which is also important. Okay. Thanks for joining me. Be sure to hit that like button. We're on a march to 1,000 subs. Thank you and good night.